uh, uh, like this, and for this exciting conference today, and um, and um, and like this, it's uh, like this, it's it's uh, like it's a very hard task to follow Doctor uh, um, and to like and to follow your Doctor Doctor Wong at this time, and I'm going to talk some of the same things out here actually today. So, and I thank the chairs, and I thank you for uh, for actually taking this time to actually uh, uh, um, like this and to actually hear about Nash stuff like this, like, um, um, like this and the first thing in the like this uh, um, uh, like this in the morning it will definitely help us plan you know what we actually eat uh, throughout the rest rest of the day so um, this were my disclosures um, and these are the pre-test pre-test questions and I do expect everyone to uh, uh, like this uh, to get actually you know, 100 percent on this. And and uh, like this, and like and like this with that, I start to show that you know there are a third of the population in this country who suffer from actually um, NAFL at this time. And like and like this and like this and like this, um, um, like this, and like this almost eight to ten percent of all children. Also, as shown in that plot out there, we can see that. Uh, there is a increasing prevalence in this country, and this and this actually data was shown in this year's ASLD of 2021. So, so you know, we can see that there is um, definitely a significant issue going on at this time in this country and um, and also around the world. Um, and let it, and there are. Let this, uh, let this, uh, let this, a significant amount of actually uh, risk factors which can, which can, uh, let this, which can actually lead to fatty, fatty liver disease, and the first one is of course, uh, like, is of course obesity uh, in these, uh, in these patients. Um, as can be seen uh, in this cartoon, we see that in patients who have uh, diabetes, hyper, like hyperlipidemia, hyper, like hypertension. Which, 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 like this, which, which, like this, which, like this, which, like, like this, which actually in together form like the um, like this, like this and the syndrome, and it can lead to um, NAFL. Also, in patients with like this increased amount of actually fructose, uh, dietary fat, as well as high like this high fat diet, it can lead to um, NAFL as well. In P, uh, like this, um, and, uh, and, uh, like, and it's important to actually like this keep in mind in some patients who have certain uh, genetic mutations or SNPs, which is um, such as the um, uh, such as the um, um, uh, like this, uh, such as the uh, uh, such as the uh, TM6 um, SF2 and the PNPL3. It can lead to increased progression of like of actually NAFL in these patients and gender like ethnicity and the family history, it can also add on to some of these patients for the, for the development of um, NAFL and, uh, and also actually NASH. So uh, this shows the, um, and this shows the NAFL uh, spectrum. Out here, you know, what we are seeing that, you know, some of these patients can develop simple fat, uh, like this, which is called simple steatosis, you know, and, uh, and some of them um, let this go on to develop um, NASH. Uh, like this, which is the presence of inflammation with or without the, uh, like this, with or without the, uh, like this, with or without the, like the, uh, uh, like the presence of actually liver five, five, five rosses. As seen in this very, 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 very light um, strands of um, strands out here. In some of these patients, the fibrous tissue extends all across the um, all across the liver, and as we all like, all know in this um, in this room, um, this is this is called cirrhosis. It's important to understand, you know, how many of these patients can progress to cirrhosis, how many of these patients can have other outcomes as well. Eighty percent or the majority of the patients are going to have simple fat, with very little um, like this progression of disease and no increased um, death compared to the general population. A fifth of the patients progress to um, NASH, and a tenth of those, like I'm not, yeah, a tenth, uh, a tenth of those patients progress to um, cirrhosis. Um, and a third of the NASH patients can progress to um, decompensation, and 7% of those uh, progress to HCC. Now, now, it's important to know that HCC, it can develop like this without even the presence of cirrhosis. 
Now, now you know, if you think about these arm numbers, they don't seem that high if you think only a third of the of the Nash patients. But 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 you know, if you think as the starting number of almost 100 million patients in this country, it's it just starts adding up that that you know this number is huge. It's important to understand that you know what are the factors which can um, lead to increased risk for um, death, increases for um, sickness in these patients. Among those with um, NAFL, the major cause of uh, mortality and the morbidity is cardiovascular disease. Extrahepatic uh, cancers also affect these patients. So it's, uh, so it's important to also like this, keep that in the back of the mind um, as, you, um, as you take care of these, of these, uh, of these patients. And this was, uh, 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 this was a paper which just, which just came up, uh, like this came out and it supported the, like the previous data which showed that the fibrosis stage is the most important uh, um, like this, um, it is the like this. 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 It is the predictor of future worse clinical outcomes in these patients. So in so in like in patients who develop stage stage actually three and stage four on disease, they have a very significant increased risk for developing HCC, um, um, like the bleed, and also um death from any um, any cause. So it's important to actually think how we can uh, find these patients early on and also how we can help improve the fibrosis for these patients and bring them backwards. So, and, and you know, as, I, um, as I said it before, NAFL and actually um, NASH, it just doesn't affect the liver. It, it does affect almost a lot of different organs. And, and it has been shown that um, NASH can affect the heart uh, as well as um, as well like, as well as cause our uh, CKD independent of um, of uh, of like of like this other like this other uh, causes uh, such as diabetes or uh, like this, or like this hypertension. So you know that's a very important concept, and we don't quite understand yet why this happens. But like there is a lot of work in the field to to, uh, uh, to actually try and um, and also uh, and, and to try uh, try. And also, um, like this, um, 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 uh, let, uh, let this understand that. So you know, and like, and and let this, at this time, I'll take a segue and go into the uh, let this and let this, and go into screening, and let this, how do we detect um, Nash in patients? And the and the test, which is uh, seems to be, um, like, it's used the most most commonly around the uh, like, around the like this around the world is ALT. It's uh, it's important to note that ALT, it's uh, it's not a great test to say if a patient has NASH or not. As shown in this um, in this very nice set of um, bar diagrams, we can see that even in patients with significant inflammation or significant fibrosis, almost half of the patients do not have elevated ALT. And that's a very important concept to actually keep in mind that your patient might have quite bad disease, but, but, but they might not have elevated ALT. But in those who have elevated ALT, uh, there is a very high likelihood that they have um, NASH, which, which again is the presence of, uh, it's, it's the presence of inflammation with or without the presence of fibrosis. So uh, there are um, there is a lot of work in the field, and and you know as shown by Dr. Dr. Wong, just um, uh, just just about fifteen minutes ago, you know, and he showed all these uh, serum tests. There's a there's a lot of interest to to actually try and find these um, non-invasive tests or or like otherwise called like NITs, right? So the goal was to try and detect liver fibrosis as the first goal. And now there's an interest to also try and find out NASH fibrosis in, like, uh, as, as, um, uh, um, as a disease marker. So you know, these are some of the tests out there of which FIF4, it's free. It's easily like there's available. It was developed for hep C and, and it has been validated for NASH. And, and it's a great test. And I'll show you some data on that. And of course, you know, other tests, which was developed specifically 
for Nash is the NAFL fibrosis score, ELF, the, 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 um, the FIP C3, and also NIS4. And out here, it also shows you, you know, what these tests can contain. Uh, and some of these you can just order um, inside your Epic or, you know, whatever EHR health system and you, um, like, like this, and you have. And the, and the next uh, tool is basically imaging tool. Imaging is, is becoming the backbone for NASH, uh, not only for, for our patients to actually take care and to understand where the disease stands, but in also in developing our drugs. So out here, I'm showing you two of the most common actually modalities, uh, which includes transient elastography, which is ultrasound based, and you, and you have the fibro scan, or the ultrasound or shear, uh, shear wave elastography. It can include a CAP, which is control attenuation parameter, which detects fat. And, and you also have MRI, which is basically MRE, which is MR elastography, MR PDFF, which is the proton density fat fraction, which is a very sensitive means for detecting fat. And it's also used in phase 2A uh, clinical trials to find out how a drug is, like is it working or not early on. And the last one is the liver multi-scan or called the CT1 or the corrected T1. It, is been, um, it, is been, it has been shown to be um, like this useful for NASH fibrosis. They are limited by, uh, by their, you know, where they are and it's also expensive. So, and also I want to take a little bit of segue to show some of the work which we have done at our center and we have developed a dynamic um, like this PET scan based tool, you know, um, like the FDG, it's available around the, like the, around the world, almost everywhere for cancer applications. What we showed that using dynamic PET, we are able to detect liver inflammation as well as um, NASH with, with like this, with like this, with like this very high sensitivity and specificity. And in the next generation PET scan, which we have already um, developed and it's, um, and it's functional, we can actually image the patient in a single go in this total body PET scan. It's called it's called Explorer. And what we uh, and what we actually intend to achieve is that the patient can just go in and actually get the test for the liver as well as um, as well as also you know understand you know where they stand in terms of their heart disease and CKD. Uh, um, CKD risk, as we as we all now know, you know these these are some of the extra hepatic risks for Nash. So so basically, you can you can um, understand you know where the patient stands once they once they get that scan. And then of course you know there is a interest in the field to actually combine these imaging and the serum based marker for Nash fibrosis. So you know this uh, this is a lot of work from Dr. Nuruddin uh, um, uh, Naim Al Khuri and also from Dr. Lumba group, and they show that when the combined fibro fire scan, CAP AST, also then you have the mass score came, which is the MRE and the AST, which and then the C tag, which is the corrected T1, which is the liver multi scan with the with the with the actual AST and of course games the MIFIB, you know they they you know they are uh, basically uh, um, they're not, um, and they um, and they just need a new set of actually names. So if you can come up with names, send it out. So you know, MRE plus you know FIB four and you get this MIFIB score. They're all very sensitive for detecting a um, NASH fibrosis. So, so you know, can NITs take care of your patient? Once you start taking care of this patient, now you have detected the patient and you are telling this patient to do whatever they need to do to, to actually take care of the, of the liver. So now the patient tells you, hey doc, how do I know my liver is getting better? So there was a study which was done, which showed that the NITs are actually now showing that they are beneficial to follow the patient out here. What I'm showing you are a set of NITs like the fifth four, the NAFL, fibrosis score, both of them showed, um, and they performed really well to predict any progression in the liver fibrosis stage and the prediction of the progression to advanced fibrosis. So you know, those are so, so no, so no, so no, so no, um, definitely you can use like this FIP4 as well as other imaging tools, which you can in your practice to understand, you know, where the patient is in the future. So you know, how do you approach and 
and and um, and like the, and again you know some of you have already seen uh, some of the same slides before but then uh, uh, but then just to talk about it very shortly you have the patient and like there's most of you out here get the referral sent to you so you think less about them but then you know if you if you think about in the in the community these patients are seen for the first time and the most common cause they are seen is because of elevated alt or they had an ultrasound and they found fat in the liver so they want to understand you know how the liver is doing and you know where do they stand so you so you first want to confirm that you don't have any other liver disease and you exclude alternate causes of elevated alt and then you do risk stratification of this patient. And that's the very important step. You want to, yeah, and the risk stratification, if you think back, is based on the liver fibrosis state. So you use FIF4. So you use FIF4, and the PAS score was FIF4 less than 1.3. These are simple, uh, um, there's almost no fib fibrosis. And if you think back, 80% of those patients do good. So basically you tell the patient to go lose weight, focus on that, follow with the PCP, you can do FIF4 to follow these patients. And second, when you do the FIF4 between 1.3 and 2.67, you think, okay, you know, this patient might need a secondary workup. You do imaging to try and find out where you, where you stand. And then you do more than 2.67 and you do more secondary testing as well as consider a liver biopsy in these patients. But you know, some of these are changing as we go forward. We will have new ASLD guidelines come out this year, hopefully for NAFL NASH. And this is based from data from Dr. Lumba's group at UCSD. Show that you know, uh, if you have a FIF4 less than 1.1, so their cutoffs are changing, that's good. But you know, if it's, if it's more than 1.1, then you want to do a secondary test again. And then based on the secondary test, you can determine like if you have a MRE, which is more than eight kilopascals or, um, or a transient elastography more than 20 kilopascals, there is 20% chance that this patient is going to decompensate. So you definitely want to keep that patient on your radar quite a, quite a little bit more. So treatment options, right? You know, so you know, this is a short talk. So I'll, so I'll try to go through some of the more salient things and of course try to, try to basically give you an update um, on some of the things that we know. So, you know, uh, treatment, the, the mainstay remains weight loss, and that is important. I'll show you some data on that, you know, either by diet, exercise, and of course, bariatric surgery works in most patients. And, and the new treatment is gastric balloon, uh, um, you know, and, and, you know, hopefully we'll see more data on that in the future. In terms of the medications, I'll show you some current and also emerging uh, um, in terms of um, the, uh, like, you know, uh, treatments. So the weight loss, five to seven percent of the body weight had improvement in steatosis and inflammation, and this is uh, and this is data from uh, from prior as well as in this year's ASLD, which showed that, as you can see in the below bar diagram, you know if you see that a five uh, like this more than five percent weight loss was was associated with uh, like this with significant improvement of all the histologic markers for inflammation, but not for fibrosis. More than 10% weight loss in the previous uh, latest work showed it was associated with not only improvement of the NASH, but also with fibrosis. So definitely it works. And I'm sure all of you have seen some of these patients in your practice as well. Diet, you know, high carbohydrate diet um, intake, in the recent data showed it associate with increases for fibrosis um, severity, especially in the PNPLA3 um, G allele carriers. Decreasing the caloric intake by at least 30% results in improvement of hepatic steatosis. But you know, we need prospective trials comparing, uh, comparing like there's various diets in NAFL and the patients uh, um, uh, which are limited at this time. Although the Mediterranean diet, as we all know, has been shown to have significant improvement in steatosis. So that's something you can definitely recommend to your patients. Um, exercise, you know, we don't have very clear data on that, but it's just common sense. And also it's, it's you know, there is some, uh, there is some um, data to show that, um, that the patients who maintain physical activity more than 150 minutes of um, a week has that, uh, has that improvement in their ALT. Alcohol consumption in NAFL. So, you know, this is a uh, works in prog prog progress. I had to update the uh, slide based on this paper, which just came out. 
So previously, I used to show a, show a little bit different. So you know, so so now they are saying from this paper, any alcohol use is discouraged. So please keep that in mind when you talk. So you know, so you know, evidence suggests that any level of alcohol consumption is associated with worsening liver outcomes in NAFL. But then more data will be needed for definite recommendations. In terms of regimens of uh, no current FDA approved regimen, as you also saw in Dr. Wong's talk. ASLD, it provides guidance on the current available regimens that have been studied. Based on, the, uh, based on the PIVNS data, we know that vitamin E 800 IU showed histologic NASH improvement, but not five, five, five process. Pioglitazone, which is Actos, showed histologic benefit and can be used in type two diabetes mellitus, but uh, but there are uh, but there are like this um, like this adverse effect of actually uh, like of actually weight gain and edema. You know this slide is going to come to your post test, so it's very important that you know every single part 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 of it. So you know uh, you know appreciate this excellent slide was which was done from doctor but from like from Doctor Harrison's group. It showed these all these targets out here. So it's important to uh, keep in mind as we sit in this room that this is not Hep C. You don't just treat one target and you're done. This is a multi-target disease. We are not going to have one drug which is going to like this, like this cure it all. It's important to understand that you know we have these multiple, I'm um, like these modalities which can um, lead to NAS. Some of the more pertinent ones are those part, those pathways which can lead to increase, uh, increase um, lipid. Um, also, also increase um, increase insulin um, insulin actually like like this like this like this insulin actually resistance, and also the pathways which can lead to increase um, increase inflammation, and increased fibrosis. So you start thinking about drugs which can decrease inflammation, decrease fibrosis, decrease the lipid pathway, decrease the uh, and improve the insulin sensitivity, and then and then a few others um, around. I'll talk um, quickly about the drugs which are in the most earliest phases, uh, uh, most latest phases, uh, which are the phase three um, trials. We know about like this OCA or like this, uh, or like this obiticolip acid, which is a FXR receptor agonist. And there are two of their studies, Regenerate, which is for stage uh, two and three, uh, and the reverse, which is for stage four, uh, 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 like well compensated patients. And then we have the MGL um, 3 one 31996 um, or the resmeterom, which is the Maestro Nash, which is for again stage um, two and three. The, uh, the Aramcol, which is the fatty acid bile acid conjugate um, inhibitor of, of like this hepatic sterile coid desaturus or all, all of the SCD1, which is the armor trial. And then the semaglutide, uh, which is a GLP1 receptor agonist. Um, and you know, I couldn't find the name anywhere. I'm sure they have a name. So, so no, intercept uh, the regenerate trial. Um, this this was the published data. It showed, you know, they had the two separate doses, ten and twenty five, uh, twenty five, uh, twenty five, like this, twenty five actually milligram. Um, there was significant improvement of the fibrosis with no worsening of arm um, NASH. They did meet their, uh, they did meet their primary outcome. As you can see, the and the dose 25, 25 milligram, it's significantly uh, improved over the, over the placebo. The 25 milligram dose, unfortunately, it did suffer from significant pruritus. Almost a half of the patients did have significant pruritus compared to the placebo, which had um, 20%. It did increase LDL, but these patients did respond to um, statin as well. <clears throat> um, Resmitrom, again, this is a phase two data. Which, uh, which was tested in 117 patients, which, which, uh, who actually received um, the drug versus the, versus the placebo two is to one for 36 weeks. And what here it shows the MR PDFF, um, the absolute reduction and the relative, um, relative, um, relative actual reduction. And there was significant reduction of the fat in both absolute and the relative uh, reduction. In the open open label arm of the phase three uh, study, which was shown in the ASLD um, 2021, it showed actually um, um, like this 170 uh, like this 171 patients treated with uh, like uh, like this uh, like this with their uh, like this with their uh, like this 
um, like this with their uh, like this with their hundred milligram dose showed or showed or like this or like this a rapid and sustained reduction in their in their hepatic fat on PDFF and also a decrease in the non-invasive arm markers of five cross. So we are going to see what their uh, like this, what their data shows when it comes out. Aram call again. This is the phase two arm um, data, which showed that uh, in their uh, like this, which showed a decrease in ALT and also a trend towards improvement. Uh, like this, with the six hundred uh, like this with the six hundred milligram uh, um, twice a day dose. Uh, um, um, and currently in their open level arm uh, um, of the 16 patient, 50% showed fibrosis improvement of actually more than one stage seen as early as um, 24 weeks. So we are definitely interested to see how the data pans out in the future. Semaglutide phase two, 320 patients um, randomly assigned to receive semaglutide at a dose of um, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4 on daily or placebo for 72 weeks. They had a resolution of, of NASH with no worsening of liver fibrosis, which was their primary endpoint. There was improvement. There was a trend towards improvement of the liver fibrosis with no worsening of of NASH, it's important to keep in mind they got a they got a 33% placebo response. So it's definitely hard to get a significant value in the treatment arm if you have such a very high placebo response. So other promising agent, and again, I chose this just by the just by the just by the toss of the coin. There are multitude of um, like there's you know, other drugs, um, efroxyformin, which is a long-acting FGF21 analog. Uh, 80 patients are um, randomized. To weekly subcube efroxyformin 28, 50, or 70, um, like there's milligrams or placebo for 16 weeks. Again, it showed significant improvement in the absolute hepatic fat fraction compared to the placebo. Um, uh, and the uh, like the um, and the pan PPR agonist, which is actually um, Lani Febronor, 247 patients um, randomized. To, to actually daily uh, 800 or 12, 1200 milligrams compared to the uh, compared to the placebo, uh, and the 1200 milligram arm had a significant improvement. Uh, uh, it did it did achieve its primary outcome, which is the SAFA score versus the placebo of 55 percent versus 33 percent, and they all showed a trend towards improvement with the drug. And of course, in the future, we think about how can we personalize care in the patient. The genetic risk factors will be taken into account. Type 2 diabetes mellitus and NAFL patients harboring at least a minor allele of the PNPLA3 and the TM6, um, um, TM6 SF2 uh, polymorphism have, uh, have a significantly worse prog 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 prognosis regarding their liver disease. And targeting the PNPLA3 is an, is an attractive mechanism for, for treating our NAFL. And then on the, on the right, and you know, this is data from our group, which we are showing that we were able to develop an AI-based model with which we can predict the risk for developing HCC with very high specificity as well as um, sensitivity, you know, and, and like this, hopefully we'll be able to, you know, use such tools in the future to try and risk stratify patients and, and also able to screen those patients going forward. Uh, so the road ahead, bio, biomarkers, which I was able to show, and I hope I was able to convince for defining NASH inflammation and fibrosis it's uh, it's um, it's a very essential field, and it's and it's um, and it's um, and it's develop um, and it's um, and it's definitely um, like this improving. And there are um, new therapies to improve um, liver inflammation and fibrosis, and to reduce cardiovascular risk while improving on uh, liver disease. Also, um, also we need to have all um, like all like this all like this complete approach to improve clinical outcome, not just for the liver, but for the entire NASH patient, and also like this personalized and, um, and targeted therapy for NASH. And with that, I want to thank um, and thank uh, and let this, let this, let this, and thank you all uh, for your time. And these are the post-test questions.
Dr. Sarkar, before you leave.